In this video, I want to talk about how to calculate the rotational inertia of an object using what's called the parallel axis theorem. It's kind of a handy theorem that you can use when you move the axis of rotation parallel to the one that exists at the center of mass. So let's take a look at an example we've seen before. So this is our thin rod. And let's say this is of mass m. And the center is right here. And it's length l. And if we rotate this about the center of mass right here, so it'd be like a clockwise rotation or counterclockwise, this is the axis of rotation, uh, we know that the rotational inertia I is equal to 1 12th m l squared, if we know the mass and length. So let's say, for instance, that I change the axis of rotation. I move the axis parallel to that existing one. So imagine this is like an axle coming out of the screen, right out at us. So this is the original one. But what if I move it over here, let's say to the very edge, and it's parallel to it. It's parallel to this one. If you want a three-dimensional diagram, maybe we can draw that here so you can visualize it a little bit better. This would be a side view. So this is the object here like this. So this is the original axis. And we're going the one right here, and we're gonna move it to one, let's see, right over here at the edge. Okay? So we're gonna rotate about an axis that's parallel to the original. Okay? So uh and this again we, we rotate like this. So the parallel axis theorem says this. It says in general, the new the new rotational inertia is equal to the rotational inertia at the center of mass, which we know is one twelfth ml squared plus a fudge factor, md squared. m is the mass of the object, which is capital M in this case, and d is, d is the distance from the original axis to the new one. So in this case, it's half the length, or L over 2. Okay, But I could put it anywhere. I could put it halfway, quarter way, third way. I could put it anywhere in between here. I just have to know that distance. So if I do that, I can quickly calculate a new rotational inertia, about the new rotation axis, the one parallel to it, which is, in this case, let's see, 1 12th m l squared plus the fudge factor, so the mass is m, and the distance is l over 2 quantity squared. Okay, because I moved it halfway across. So if I continue this, just so we can see the final answer and, and kind of evaluate what's going on here, this is m l squared plus m l squared over 4 and I'm going to get a common denominator here, I'm going to go 3 and 3 so this is equal to three m l squared over 12 for a total of 4 twelfths m l squared which is equal to 1 third m l squared. So that's the new rotational inertia about the um, end point. So I move the axis parallel to the original one. So you can see here the new rotational inertia is actually a lot bigger than the original, which makes sense because in this case you have a lot more mass away from the center of rotation, the, the, the rotation point here. When you had the original one, they were kind of equally distributed left and right. When you put it here, everything's on the right hand side. So more mass is further away from the rotation point, and as we know, the more mass away from the rotation point, the rotationally heavier it is, or more massive, I should say. It's more massive, and so that explains the one third. So in general, the rotation, the uh, parallel axis theorem says, give me the if I move the rotation point to an axis parallel to the original one, the new one is equal to the original one at the center mass plus the mass of the object times d squared. How far from the original axis of the center of mass axis is that from the new axis? And with this you can do lots of different calculations of centers of masses of objects uh, actually pretty simply.